Hello, this is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And as I mentioned in the previous uh, show, I was got, I've gotten in some products from MFJ to do a review, and one of them is this antenna analyzer. And so we're going to do probably a series of reviews on this analyzer because it's got a lot of functions, and I can't get them all in one show. So here we go. Here's the uh, box that it comes in and it says on the box it says it's good from 1 to 230 megahertz the previous analyzer that I reviewed about six months ago was only good to 60 megahertz so we're good up to 230 megahertz which includes the 2 meter band and the 220 megahertz amateur radio bands it has an LCD display, LCD graphic display single sweep and sweep frequency modes and under those two modes there's a whole bunch of tests you can do convenient handheld designs portable requires two AA batteries and so you can take it outside if you want to do some testing at, at the antenna yourself and it has the no matter what one year warranty it's something I didn't mention before MFJ gives you a one year warranty that you can, if you have a problem with a product, product, you can send it back and they will either repair it or send you a brand new one. No questions asked. Never had to use that, but it's good to have it. So anyway, what's in the box? Okay, in the box is the manual. Actually, uh, understandable manual. It's 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 not. It doesn't appear to be converted Chinese to. English, so it's very easy to read. The analyzer itself, good fit in your hand. Uses, as I said, two AA batteries back here. Big display. And here's the connections. This is the USB port. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Here is the antenna connector itself. It comes with an in-type connector. And if, like most HF antennas, you use this kind of connector, it, they give you the adapter. And this is like an $8 item that they include. So you just put the adapter on here and then hook up your coax cable to your antenna right here. So let's do that right now. Oh, also, they, here is the USB cable. And this is pretty hefty USB cable because one of the modes you can use is have your computer control the analyzer. So you don't want your computer to be inducing RF noise into the analyzer. So they give you this very specialized hefty uh, USB cable and it even has this coil right here to again keep the RF noise out of your meter. Okay, so let's put up, hook this adapter up. And like I say, I'm going to do a couple of shows on this analyzer because it, uh, it's got so many functions. So right here is my G5RV antenna. And this is the coax directly to the antenna. The G5RV, as many of you know, it's kind of a general purpose antenna and it covers from if you get the full size one it covers from 80 meters to 10 meters um, and I use it as a shortwave antenna kind of a broadband shortwave antenna it's it's not great on all frequencies as far as the standing wave ratio but it it does a pretty good job on all the whole HF band and it's, it's tuned precisely to get you the best performance on the 40 meter band. So it's very good at um, 7 megahertz. So we're going to, um, we're going to turn this on and try this out here. And push and hold the power button right here and now I'm going to um, turn some lights off 
So hopefully you can, whoops, I turned that light on. I thought it was off. I mean, I was off, I thought it was on. Okay, and if I get this thing to focus for me, come on, baby, come on, focus. There we go, whoops. Ooh, I'm gonna have to hurry hold this thing steady. There we go. So there is the main screen. And boy, I'm gonna have to try to really hold this close because my camera is really struggling to keep it in focus. And you can see also that the keys are backlit. So if you're working in the dark, you can see the keys. And there we go. There's the main menu with the options of a single frequency test, a sweep frequency plot. So you can set the start and end frequency that it tests. Calibrate the device itself, which you don't want to do unless you buy the little calibration loads. Uh, you can change the settings and the PC mode where you can either have your PC control a device or download data plots that have been saved to your PC. Then you can use an Excel program to manipulate that those test results. So we're going to use the sweep frequency plot. So I use the down arrow button, go down to that, and then I hit the inner button, which is a O. And then these are the various, let's see if I can hold this, these are all the tests that you can do. SWR, oh man, my camera's struggling. SWR, I read them all for you. SWR, impedance, resistance, reactance, return loss, phase angle, and a Smith chart. Yeah, a Smith chart. So those are all the things that it will do. There they are. Hold it steady, Tom. So I'm going to do just today just an SWR test. So I'm going to select that. And now it's in the SWR test. And it's constantly doing a test over and over again. It's sweeping whatever frequencies I have set up for it to, to, to sweep. Now, what you can do... Ow, gosh, my elbow. <laughs> okay. Ah, hold it steady, Tom. Okay, there's the plot. And right now, um, let me see what my parameters are. So I can select this button here and I can change the parameters. I can change the star frequency, the end frequency, and the Y scale, and I think maybe one or two other things. So let's see if we can change um, the start frequency or see what it is. So I push this button, see if I can hold the camera, I mean hold it. Start frequency is two megahertz, that's what I want. Push it again, stop frequency is, I had it there for a second, 30 megahertz. And I can change that, change those to whatever I want using the up and down arrows. So it is now, like I said, it's running continuous, giving me uh, the plot, so this is a plot. Oh, the one thing I didn't show you, let me go back. Scale. I didn't show you the scale. Come on, camera. Come on. Oh, it's already gone. If it if you don't do something, it'll just go back and start running the test again. So there's a scale. The Y scale is 30. In this case, that would be an SWR of 30 pretty high number. I could set that to a lower number. Let me set that. I, I'm hoping that it won't, this antenna won't go above, say, 15. Even that's a pretty big number. So let me go back. And I'll change that scale to 10. Let's say 10. Okay. So now the the max Y value is 10. So it's going to really blow up that plot it had before. And let me give it a chance to uh, come on. Come on, come on, camera, you can do it. Oh, I'm struggling. Get the light just right. Come 
Come on. Come on, camera. Pretty please. Oh, it's trying. I had a better angle or something for. Oh, darn, I hate this. My old cheap old um, camera just is struggling. Oh, I want you to see the plot so bad. It's very easy to read for me, but the old camera is really struggling. Come on. Boy, I had it there for a minute. Come on. I know I'm wasting your time trying to get this, but I really wanted to get that, that plot in there so you can... Dude, it's, it's trying. Oh, it's so close. Let me try turning a light on. Maybe I got don't have enough light. Let's see if that helps any. Oh, it struggles. There we go. Come on now, focus. There it is. That's the secret, getting it really close to the camera. So there's the plot. And you can see it's actually changing a little bit. And then you can use the arrow, while it's a plot is being shown, you can use the arrow buttons to move that vertical line, and that's the number, the value at the vertical line. So at 13.3333 megahertz, the SWR is 3.68. So let's go to one of these, whoops, one of these valleys here. There's a real deep one back here. And see what that frequency is. Come on, stay in there. Okay, the value is 1.72 SWR. Again, ideally, which can never be achieved, you want 1.1. And the frequency is 7 megahertz. 7.11, which, like I say, these GR, G5RVs are best at around 7 megahertz. So that antenna is working properly. And then you can see at some frequencies it's not doing too good. And like I say, you can use the arrow keys to um, move along in these frequencies. There's a really a bad spot. There's a 7.8 reading at 9 megahertz. And then it finally drops down at, whoops, where'd it go? Right there is about 14 megahertz. Again, 14.22. Again, that's one of the amateur radio frequencies, which is this, that's what this antenna is designed for. Um, another frequency for the amateur radio band would be like 21 megahertz. Let's see if that's what this next low point is. No, it's actually about 18.2 megahertz. And then let's go back up and see what it does, or back down, and see if it'll have some good readings at about 3.9 megahertz. Yep, right there, right there, 2.2 at 3.77. Again, that's what this antenna is designed to work at, is 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. That's where it's supposed to be, have the lowest SDWR, which means if you're transmitting, the maximum amount of power will get out of your transmitter, transmitter to your antenna. And if you're receiving, you receive the strongest signals at that lowest SWR Typically, that's re receiving is a little bit different. It's not doesn't really 100% follow the SWR reading. So, for instance, 
if you wanted to build your own antenna for a certain frequency or a certain band, say you wanted to build it, if you're, if you want to build it to listen and you want to listen to like what I do is a 31 meter band, you can, you know, get the instructions of how to build it, how long it should be and stuff like that to be best at that frequency. Then you can use this device to fine tune it and it will, it will do it dynamically. So this thing works pretty darn good, especially if I can get it. There we go. Pretty good plot there. Easy to read. Um, I think you can add some extra scales. Let me see. I think I read that. Let's see. Let's see what kind of options. I think it's under... Grid on. Okay, the grid's on. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So the grid's on. The other thing you can do is you can load calibration data. You don't want to do a calibration unless you have the proper tools. And then you can save. You can save this plot so that you can either um, download it to your computer or I don't know if you can recall it on this thing so you can see you know so you take some data uh, outside or some at somebody else's antenna and you save it and you can come back to your house or come inside you can look at the data and uh, write some numbers down and give the guy a little report on how his antenna is doing so pretty cool little device um, you can you can actually get this thing through my Amazon store Amazon sells these uh, for MFJ. So you can get this out of my Amazon store if you'd like to get one. Plus, there's many other MFJ products that Amazon sells that I have in my Amazon store. So anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. We're going to do some more testing on this. Look at some more of these other functions. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.